What's up and welcome to the last little piece of the puzzle, but a very important piece. We're gonna be talking about traffic alchemy, which is essentially turning your traffic into leads and sales. So we've already gone through exactly sort of the do's and don'ts. We've talked about creating your profile in this way that turns it into a sales funnel, turns it into this lead generating machine where it's set up nicely, it's all traffic ready to go. We've optimized it for conversions. We've done it all. It looks pretty, it looks good. And then we spent the last video talking talking about exactly how we create content, some of the content frameworks and some of the things that you can use in posts and reels and all these sorts of things to be able to get people to sort of raise their hand and say, hey, I like what you're talking about, I'm interested, how do I get more information, how do we get access to this stuff? And so once you're at that point, once you've got people who've raised their hand and said, hey, I'm kind of interested in this, they've either PM'd you, maybe they've commented on one of the posts that you've made saying, hey, I want more info, or you know, if you did a two-step style post where you had people comment below and they said, hey, I'm ready, that type of thing, right? What do you do with all those people once you have them. You saw that post I did had like 236 people who were all like, yeah, I'm, I'm open to this, I want this. Well, now what? Now how does that turn into leads and sales? That could be a little overwhelming if you don't have a plan. And so today's video, Traffic Alchemy, is all about that plan and how that is gonna look and work for you. So let's go through it together here. First things first, let's talk about traffic temperature. Not everybody who comes and follows your page or is a friend or even likes or responds on some of your posts is necessarily ready to become a lead or ready to buy. Traffic has different states of awareness, different states in the buying cycle, and so we wanna understand what those are because depending on where they fall, we will probably treat them differently. If you kinda of go with this one size fits all approach, it's not gonna work. Your conversion rate's gonna go way down you actually may even risk causing harm to your brand and what you're doing with people who aren't ready to hear certain messages from you yet. So you want to have some awareness with this. The first traffic temperature is people who are cold. So this is someone who has accepted your friend request or been on your friends list for a while or somebody who maybe just started following you, something like that. They know very little about you. They may have seen one video. You may have connected with them in a Facebook group or something like that. You may have just added them as a friend or they may have just added you as a friend, right? Can go that way too. So they are stone cold. That is going to be the hardest group of people to ever convert into anything. Those people need to get warmed up a little bit first, okay? Next we have warm. This is someone who engages with your content in some way. So you may have posted a reel, posted a, done a post on your timeline, whatever it is, and that person may have just liked it. They may have hearted it. They may have uh, commented. They've reacted with your piece of content in some way. These people are warm because we at least we know they've seen something from us. They engaged in some way. That's a good sign that that they're actively sort of following you, they've seen your content and they took the time to engage with it. It does make a difference and so they become a little bit more warm. Next we have hot. Hot are, is essentially someone who has raised their hand and expressed interest in either a direct uh, message, they've seen one of your direct uh, offer posts or an indirect offer post and they've raised their hand and said, hey, I want more information, I'm interested in this. Most people think that that's enough, that that right there means that that person's going to buy from you and that's just not true. Just because somebody's hot doesn't mean that they are ready and ready is the final stage. That is like where you're good to go, okay? And we wanna get as much of our traffic into this ready stage as we possibly can. And ready is someone who has given you permission to help them solve their problem, meaning that not only did they raise their hand and say they're interested, but you've got them a little bit further down the line to where they're actually asking you for help, which is the beauty of this, is if you follow my framework, there's really no arm twisting, there's no hard sales, there's no nothing like that. It's just a series of asking some simple questions to have somebody ask you to help them, right? To ask you for your link, to ask you if they can take it a step further. That is a much more fun way uh, to approach things. And, uh, and, and honestly, when you get this permission first, it makes the whole process a lot easier and your conversion rate goes way, way up. So those are the traffic temperatures. So what happens when somebody actually responds in a DM or somebody comments on a post and says they're ready? What is the next 
stage? What do you do right directly after that? The first thing you want to do is gain permission to message them. And so you love their comment and you comment back asking for permission to send them a private message. So if they're a follower and not a friend, your message may end up in their other inbox or spam. So let them know how to check there because that does happen, right? Sometimes you message somebody and you're not, they're just a follower on your page or something like that. Your message won't go right into their main inbox. It'll go to their spam. And so you want to make sure they're aware of that. And so this also increases engagement on the post. If you uh, just like all the people who said ready on your post, that will limit the engagement. If you comment and respond to all those, the engagement goes way up. So an example would be somebody leaves a comment, I'm ready. You comment in response to that right below it. Great. Going to send you a PM. Okay. That's it. Just simple, simple. Then they may respond back and say, yep. And then you say, great, make sure you check your spam and other inboxes because we're not friends on Facebook. Right there, you've turned like one comment into potentially like four comments and the person's in a much better position to receive your follow-up message with them, okay? So that's what I would do and you would do that for every single person who responds on one of your posts. Number three, be friendly and positive. People get weird when it comes to this. Don't be weird, okay? Keep it light. This whole process throughout the whole thing don't be weird. Yes, you're getting more into a bit of a sales mode now, but it's very, very lighthearted. It's all done through like text and messaging. So it's not hardcore phone sales. You're not trying to like quote unquote close people here. You're just taking them through a process to help qualify them a little bit more before you just send them to your link. It just increases conversion rate. So can you get conversions if you don't go through this whole process? Sure, it does still happen, but this is how you increase the conversion rate. So keep it light, don't be weird. Number four, your job is to control the conversation and keep it progressing forward. This is done by asking questions instead of making statements. If you're in a chat with somebody, okay, we're taking them now from your timeline into a chat, right, into your private messages, which is where all the deals essentially happen. You know, if you do that, right, chat's an interesting thing. It's quick. It's got to be speedy. People want to kind of get to the point. Nobody wants to sit there in a DM conversation for hours on end hearing your life story. So you want to make sure that the comments or the, the chat sequence that you're using with that is brief. It, it needs to be short, punchy, and you want to always ask questions. If you ask questions, it keeps the conversation moving forward because they are expected to respond. When you make a statement, you leave this gap open for the conversation to essentially die. When you make a statement, it's very easy for somebody just to like put an emoji reaction on the statement and then they, they that's it. They're done with kind of the chat and the conversation. Asking questions is how you keep it pro progressing forward. And so if there's lag in the conversation, obviously it decreases conversions. People get busy. They get distracted. Don't take offense to that, by the way. It does happen. People could be right getting into their car. People could get distracted with dinner. Stuff happens where the chat kind of dies out for a little bit. It doesn't mean it's over. It just means that they're a little tied up. It's really easy to re-engage a chat message if it dies out. One of my favorite ways is just honestly send them a funny gif. <laughs> it always kind of stirs the conversation back up again, or you can just ask another question in the sequence and, and away you go. You're kind of back in the game. So people, uh, no, it's number five, people may ask specific questions. The amateur mistake here is trying to answer them all and play salesman. You don't want to do that, okay? Especially if you're in this spot where you are an affiliate or you're promoting somebody else's product, something like that. They've got all the sales materials already done for you. So you don't need to be the salesman. You're not supposed to be the salesman. You're not in a great position to sell it because it's not your product. And so you don't want to do that. You're essentially the guide to get them to that information. So even if you know everything about the product you're promoting, you may be inclined if somebody asks you specific details about it. How does this work? How does that work? I promise you, if you start to get into those features, you are getting in the weeds. The conversation isn't going to go where you want it to go. And you're going to be severely limited about the volume that you could do this at. Because if you every conversation you have with a lead is taking you hours because you're trying to explain everything, you're not being very efficient with your time. So again, your conversion rate is going to go way down. And so your job is to get the prospect uh, to the landing page, which will have all the details they need. So instead of trying to go into all the details in Messenger, instead direct them to the system and let it do the work. And any good affiliate product will have some system that will educate the prospect about everything that they need to know. You are just attempting to qualify them a little bit before they go through that system. And so an example, they may ask you, well, how does XYZ work with that? And you might just say, well, great, that's actually all covered in detail here in, in the link, right? So it, it may be, 
it may be all covered right there for them. Or you may say, if you're not in the state of the conversation yet where you are prepared to give the link out yet, maybe you haven't qualified them enough yet, you may say something like, hey, that's, you know, that's a great question. That's actually covered a little bit later. I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. Hold tight, and then you ask a question back. So great question, that's actually all covered in a little bit. I'm gonna show you how that works. Before I show you that, look, I was wondering about X, Y, Z with you, and you flip it and you ask them a question back, get back control of the conversation. Whoever's asking the question in any conversation is always controlling it. So when they start to ask you questions, you've now relinquished control of the conversation over to them, and you want to, in a tactful way, get control back. So you answer their question, you don't wanna like avoid it because that's not good, that's not good in, when you're interacting with somebody, nobody wants to feel like they've been sort of dismissed. So you wanna address the question, say, hey, that's a great question, I'm gonna go through that in a second, and then you ask a question back. That's the perfect way to do it and you get back control of the conversation. So number six, use empathy and your own personal story and experience to build rapport quickly. So an example, uh, prospect, I've tried to create income online many times before, but it only ended up costing me money in the end. Your response to that might be, uh, John, totally get how you feel. A lot of people, including myself, experienced the exact same thing. This was actually the first thing that changed all that. Are you open to seeing why this is different? So you see what I did there? I still addressed it with empathy. I still totally took what he said there, which was so somewhat of an objection or maybe a fear that this person had, and I'm gonna address it. I'm gonna use empathy to kind of qualm it, and then I'm going to also flip the conversation back into my control by asking a question at the end of, are you open to seeing why this is different? You'll notice I use the word open. I want you to take the word interested out of your vocabulary inside of the chat messages. Do not use that word. That word scares a lot of people. Interested also is another word for committed in a lot of prospects' minds. And a lot of people, if they're not ready to commit and they hear the word interested, they will actually put up their walls because they get the sense that there's there's obviously sales coming here, right? I'm, I'm about to be pitched something. Their guard goes up. But when you use the word open, everybody essentially wants to be open because if you're not open, you're closed. Uh, and nobody wants to get closed. So. Open is a much better word, and you'll find that the response to that word is a lot more favorable the more that you use it. So I always use the word open. Are you open to seeing why this is different? Most people who hear that say, yeah, I'd be open to that. I'd be open to seeing it at least, right? It keeps the conversation moving forward. So how to convert warm and hot leads into consistent daily sales. This is like the best practices. So be aggressive. When you're passive, aggressive people will take your business. That's how it works. Online is very busy. There's a lot of people out there promoting and selling stuff. Almost everybody has something now. It's just the way our economy works and the world works. So you need to be a little bit more aggressive. If you're really passive, you're gonna find that people who were your leads buy from somewhere else, from somebody who actually asked them to buy. So be a little bit more aggressive than you're probably used to. After a prospect replies to you in DM or comments on one of your posts, um, the timer is ticking essentially, okay? And so you want to engage them quickly while it's top of mind because they just saw that post, they may have commented quickly. If you're not sort of on it, they may have moved on to other things. They're either off social media now or they have moved on to somebody else's post or they're just now stuck in social media world and your post is long gone, it's off their mind. People's attention span is just not that long anymore. So you need to try to find a way to get in there quickly, okay? So when you make one of these posts, ensure that you've got the next 45 minutes or hour or so free to kind of manage some of these things that are going to come with it especially if it's a, a direct offer post you want to make sure you're not like making that post and then going to watch your kids um, softball game for the next two hours where you can't be on the phone or something like that okay you want to make sure you've got some time cleared up where you can say okay i'm going to be dedicated to like being on this for the next 30 minutes 45 minutes keep your questions concise be direct and to the point with your questions. Avoid asking multiple questions at the same time. That's very hard to do in chat to answer like multiple things. It gets confusing. So just one question at a time. No paragraphs or long texts and keep it fun and conversational. Don't be afraid to use emojis. Don't be afraid to use GIFs. A picture's worth a thousand words. That's why uh, people have been using them since hieroglyphs. Those were the first emojis, <laughs> okay? You can tell a, a very good story. You can compel a lot of emotion through just pictures. So that's how people chat online. So don't be afraid to use those. They actually lighten up the conversation. That's why emojis are fun, bright colors and things. They lighten everything up. So use them inside your chat. Be a real person. Don't take it so seriously. Again, be light. Don't be weird with this. Pretend you're talking to a friend. 
punchy, short sentences. Uh, keep the conversation about what and why, not the how. This is big. People are sold on outcomes and results, not on the process. The process, nobody's all that excited about typically. That's for a higher level conversation, not at, at the stage that this person's likely gonna be in. So talk high level and not about every step involved. Relate your solution back to their problem when proposing your help. So before you give your link, make sure it fits with the problem and or the desire that they just mentioned. So as they are, and I'll, go, I'll walk you through this whole process, but as they are explaining things to you, then you're going to be able to take all the things that they're saying and use it as essentially ammo for later to essentially say, look, our, if you, this person just said in the, earlier in the conversation that I want to uh, get this back pain product because my, my, it kills me to kind of get out of bed in the morning. I have to work long hours and by you know hour six at the job, I'm really not performing very well anymore because my back's killing me, that type of thing. When you talk about your solution, you might say something like, this has been phenomenal for people who have to work long hours and and, and you know they find that they they can't make it throughout the whole day, so it's perfect for that. You know what I mean? Like you're just relating the problem back to them. Uh, it, it'll help them feel heard too. So relate your solution to their problem, and then proposing your help. Um, went through that one. Three things that you need to uncover before giving them your link. So here's three important things that I would make sure I've checked off my list before I ever just drop uh, an affiliate link uh, to somebody. And again, when you use an affiliate link, it's gonna be a unique link attached to like a unique domain, not a raw link. We're never doing that. Even in Messenger, I wouldn't do that. You want a nice, clean, pretty looking link for somebody to click on. So three things you need to uncover first. Their problem, why, what, and when. Their goal, why, what, and when. And then a gap what they think that's holding them back. So most people, if you can find out what their problem really is, so what's keeping them or holding them back, what the actual goal is that they're trying to get to, and then establishing that gap, what they think is actually holding them back from going from overcoming the problem to actually having the solution and hitting their goal. If you've got that, some of that intel, it's, it's all over, right? That's a perfect time where you can say, this, this is what you're, you need, right? because this is our lead to sale flow. So the process of actually taking somebody from one step to actually being closed, there's a, a very succinct, simple process that you can take all these people through and you can follow this essentially to a T to help guide you. So there's no guesswork, you're not having to like become some sales shark or do something like that. You're just following a really simple sequence to take them through. And so first thing is rapport. This is really important for everybody, but especially if somebody's just cold, right? You want to engage a lead and just be friendly. If they're uh, cold, keep it brief, positive, and about them. So you do not want to try to take somebody from cold to warm to hot to ready in one fell swoop. You just don't do that, right? That's a really rookie mistake. It turns people off. It's not what you want. What you want to do is if you have somebody cold, let's say somebody you just became friends with, somebody who started following your page, you could engage with them and just be friendly and kind. That's building rapport with them. Let your content help take them to warm, meaning that they start to see your stuff and like and comment on it, right? That's now warm. Then when you finally do make an indirect offer post or an offer post, that person's seeing your stuff because they've been engaging with it and they may be the person who says, hey, I'm ready. Now they're hot and now you're good to go, right? If you try to take them from cold to hot or ready off the bat, it just turns people off. So don't do that. Rapport is still built even when people are hot or ready or whatever. I mean, anytime you engage with somebody, it's really just about making it not weird, being friendly, kind, taking like any like weird sales vibes out of the equation. Just be yourself, be nice, okay? So essentially, that's it at the end of the day. Next is trust. Trust um, is essentially created and authority is created by leading the conversation and uncovering the problem. And so trust gets built at the very early stages of this, of this process, typically with somebody who's hot. So somebody who's raised their hand, said yes, and now you're into a DM conversation with them. Those types of people are already hot because they wouldn't be in your inbox unless they were. And so now you're just having to build trust because just because somebody's hot doesn't mean they're ready. Doesn't mean they're ready to buy. Taking them from hot to ready Trust is a big part of that. And so you want to create trust and authority by, again, leading the conversation. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. After you build the trust, next is permission. You gain permission to help them by asking if they're open to a solution. This is a big thing. Once you've done those three things, meaning you've figured out what their problem is or what's holding them back, you sort of know what their goals are and you've established the gap, right? You do those three things first. The next thing you're going to do is ask them for permission to help them. 
are you open to getting a solution to this? Are you open to getting some help with this? At that point, right, when you've got permission, that's when the prospect will usually say something like, yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm totally, yeah, totally. If there's some way that you think you can help me, like you're, you were saying in your post or whatever, then I'd be open to that. Now they're f far more receptive to receiving a link from you. That's like the telltale sign that they're ready, okay? Then you hit them with the link. Once you have their permission, give them your link uh, and to what you believe you can help them with. And there's some specifics around what you wanna do once you give them that link. Okay, we're gonna talk about that too. And then the follow-up. The follow-up's the last thing because not everybody buys just because they have a link. So even though they might be in the stage where they said they're ready, it doesn't mean they always pull the trigger. And so follow-up's big. Someone who um, has given you permission to help them solve um, uh, their problem but hasn't actually taken action on it yet, those are prime people for follow-up. They go at the very top of our follow-up list. And so you may just need to follow up with them a few times and say, hey, are you still struggling with that or whatever. There's a lot of like ways you could follow up with somebody. Following up with people who are like warm or whatever, that, that's a, a lot less valuable use of your time. Wait, if they're on your list, they're gonna keep seeing your content, they may move into more of a hot stage, right? And, and start to become a little bit more interested and then they become more valuable to follow up with. So step one is to gain permission to private message them. We talked about that a little bit. Great, I'm gonna send you a PM. You know, you comment on their comment. If they don't respond to your comment in a couple hours, go ahead and PM them anyways. They've already said that they were open to it. So even if they don't respond to your comment when you when you engage them on your post, you may just wanna say something like, hey John, uh, saw you commented uh, ready on my post, right? Or hey John, saw you commented on my post. Hey, thanks for uh, re reacting on my recent post. Again, some of those are gonna go to people's inboxes. Some of them will go to spam and there's not much you can really do about that if they're not responding to your comment on the post anymore and you've sent them a, a private message and they're still not responding there. They're kind of a lost lead. Like they, you know, you, there's not a whole lot we can do about that, okay? We're not gonna hound down every single one. We want people who are a little bit more engaged in that. So step number two, set the frame. So once I've actually DM them and say, hey, I saw you commented on my post, they're like, yeah, yeah, I was interested in the XYZ thing you were talking about. Say, okay, can I ask you two or three questions just to better understand your current situation and goals? Just wanna make sure that I can help you or make, I would just wanna make sure that this will help you you know, before getting into it, right? So this is setting the frame. It's kind of saying that you are gonna lead the conversation here. I just have a couple things I wanna ask you first. Step number three, create the gap. So. Ask uh, clarifying questions if answers are not specific or vague. Uh, so if, if people don't you know want to engage in these questions you're asking them, they're kind of vague about it. You know, try to ask it again in a more specific way. So uh, current situation, acknowledge and acknowledge and empathize with them before proposing a solution. Prescription before diagnosis is malpractice. Okay, so we don't want to just assume that we can help them. We want to ask these questions so that we actually can properly diagnose what's going on and find out if we can actually help them, if what we have for them is good. It's not just some one size fits all. We're trying to cram it down everybody's throat. We actually care about the prospect, what a concept, right? That I want to make sure that this is actually going to be good for you first. So I'm going to ask, you know, a couple questions. And so we want to understand where they're at. So we might say something like, what are you currently doing to create an income online? If we're in like that niche, in the wealth niche, um, what do you want to get, um, why do you want to get out of your job right now? Why not like five years ago? Stuff like that, right? How's your weight loss journey going so far? What are you doing right now to lose weight, right? It could be any niche. You could adapt these types of questions. We just want to know where they're currently at with this. And so uh, then once they respond, say, you know, I love that. Um, you know, talk for one, two sentences about it if you want to. I would try to even keep that brief and just keep it to something like, oh, that's great. You know, hey, I love that. Whatever, let them talk first before moving to the next question. And so the next piece is the desired situation. So you don't wanna ask these questions prior to establishing their current situation because these questions are a little bit more uh, in depth. They, they're just a little bit more personal. And so we wanna find out a little bit about where they're at first before we go into these. But um, you wanna ask something like, uh, what do you wanna achieve with it? What's your goal for this year? If you don't mind me asking how much income would you need to replace to be able to work from home? Uh, again, a little bit more personal. Um, where do you want to be in revenue in the next three months? What do you plan to focus on in the next few months? Uh, what's the end goal you're working towards? You know, with any of these things, 
will make sense, right? So uh, depending on what product you're selling, right? Uh, just it all depends, right? So awesome. Uh, ask, ask about the why. Um, you know, you can always get feelings behind these things too. So if somebody says, you say something like, uh, where do you want to be in revenue in the next three months? And they say, well, you know, I, I'm not making anything online right now. I'd love to be at uh, three grand a month over the next three months. You may just ask like a follow up and be like, well, why does that, why is that the number for you? Is there something that that would help with or get, get into more of the feelings? How would that feel? What would it change? That type of thing, right? Next, find the gap. Um, what have you tried to create income online in the past? Have you taken any education before this? Uh, what online courses have you taken? What do you think is the best, uh, biggest challenge to getting to XYZ goal? What do you feel is the biggest struggle at the moment? So you're not asking all of these, by the way. These are just examples of questions to ask. So don't get that confused. This is gonna be a short conversation. We are not doing like a full-blown sales call diagnosis here. We are just trying to find out if what, where they're at before we just bomb them with a link. Okay, just a little bit of uncovering uh, and discovery so that we can decide hey is this going to be a good fit or not right and just build a little bit more trust there with them so just one of these per section will will be just fine and then step four get permission to help so uh, i've seen this uh this work for lots of people who've either had a similar situation uh as they just mentioned so can probably share some helpful insights if you're open to it so Example it might be something like oh, I see uh, I've seen this work for lots of people who have to work you know long hours at their job and only have part time to kind of build something online. I've seen that work for a lot of people before, so this could probably help you if you're open to it, right? Something like that. Step number five: provide insight, empathize with the current problem. So for like business online, might be like totally get that lead flow isn't good right now. You're trying to work uh, on Facebook ads. So you might be talking to somebody who's got more experience and that's more of their, uh, their issue right now is, hey, I've been doing this for a while, but I just, I'm not breaking through. I haven't been able to create a $10,000 a month or something like that. And you may be asking, even if you've never done it before yourself, you can still ask them questions, right? You can still be the authority and, and lead this conversation. Even if you're talking to somebody who's at a higher level than you um, theoretically, right? That is the beauty of this is these questions are kind of for anybody. And so it, the, even if they've been around a lot longer than you, you could still ask them. So uh, totally get that lead flow is good right now. Um, and you're trying to work on you know, Facebook ads, if it's in like weight loss, could be totally get that you know what you need to do, but just don't have time to do it. Things like that, right? You're just empathizing with the current situation that they're in. Next is what we call a digital tie down. So this is where you start to phase into your solution, okay? So you may say something like, the truth is 90% of your success online will come down to the way you think and your mindset towards all this. If you don't have that right, almost nothing you try will work no matter how hard you try, right? Makes sense? We wanna ask that question at the end, makes sense? If you do this right, they'll start asking you more questions. Uh, example like, well, how do I get a personalized plan? How do I get my mindset right? Things like that, right? Whatever your solution is, they'll probably ask you questions around that. This is an opportunity then for you to essentially open up the door and propose the, the solution to them. So notice how we use sequence um, to ultimately Notice how we use this sequence to ultimately get them to ask us for help. That's how authority is built and sales walls are brought down. That is how it is done. If you ask the right questions, the sales walls do come down and you get that prospect into a state where they're somewhat like, it sounds like you know how you can help me with this. Like, can what what's the answer? Like, what's the solution, right? So now they're essentially like begging you for the link. That's perfect, right? Versus just like messaging somebody and saying like, hey, here's your link. Like I saw you comment on my post, here's the link. That, that is like the laziest way to do it and your conversions are gonna be way, 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 way low. You can actually change that and convert a far greater amount of people by just taking a little bit of extra time with the prospect. And it might be, it might be worth it for you to do that. Step number six, drop your link. So I got something I think can really help. You open to that, they say, yep, cool. Uh, check this out, and then boom, you hit them with the link. That's far better. You've got them so wide open now, they're gonna be receptive to it. The chance of them actually clicking the link and going through it are much higher, right? You wait for them to see the message, right? So you can see when somebody sees your message or when they respond like, hey, thanks, or whatever. And then you just say, I'll take, it'll, you'll say something like, it'll take you, it just depends on your link, okay? Um, everybody's link's gonna be different in terms of what product you're sending them to. You know about how long it should take somebody to move through your funnel. So you may say something along the lines of, it'll take you a couple minutes, I'll wait right here and just let me know when you're in, right? Because it's got obviously an opportunity for them to buy. So as opposed to just dropping it and like bailing, right? Which you, you again are relinquishing total control to somebody else, 
I like to try to keep as much control as I can. And actually, you know, it's not a, it's not a done deal till the money hits the bank. So I'll say something, you know, it'll take you a couple minutes, John. I'll just wait right here and just let me know when you're in. That, that sense of you kind of waiting around puts some accountability on them. It, it kind of forces them to be like, oh, okay, like he wants me to actually like go through this. So I'm going to actually have to like go through it, right? And so them knowing that you're kind of waiting for them and then their responsibility or job is kind of message you back when they're good to go, that's, that puts a little bit of extra pressure on, but it also increases conversion rate. So it is a really good thing to do. It may feel a little uncomfortable the first few times doing that, but trust me, it's worth it. Most people will actually end up just feeling more like cared for, like this person's like here to walk me through this whole thing. After they buy, send them this message just to take the pressure off. Sweet, I'm excited for you. Any exciting plans for this weekend? Are you just gonna chill? What's what's going on with you? Like what else are you doing for the rest of the day? You're just a nice pleasantry, kind of kind message just to take the pressure off. And that's that's the sequence. That's it. That's you from start to finish. Now, that whole thing, I know that feels like long because there's like a lot of psychology and different examples and stuff in there but it, that whole thing might take you five minutes or ten minutes in a chat so you know maybe less honestly to go through all that if you've got somebody right there who's engaged who's hot who's raised their hand and they say they're good to go you can walk them through this whole process pretty quickly to get them to a point where that link is going to be far more um they're going to be far more receptive to receiving it and that odds of them actually going through it and purchasing go way up so it's worth it to do it yes it's a little bit more time yes this is another skill set you'll have to learn how to do learning how to like kind of like quote unquote sell or move people through a sequence in a chat may take you some practice and some time the beauty is you're doing it like like right you know on a chat so you could have the your notes right in front of you if you wanted to it doesn't matter you're not on some like live call where all your answers need to be like perfect or you might you're afraid of saying the wrong thing you can literally type out everything and just literally follow this process and you should be good to go so that's kind of the great thing so you've got that and then you're uh, you're good to go you're going to watch your sales increase and so that's the whole process start to finish of taking you know a, a facebook profile that was used in the past to creep ex-boyfriends and girlfriends or share funny memes on or play Farmville or whatever, taking that thing and actually learning how to optimize it for conversion. So turn it into a sales funnel, make it look pretty, make it look professional, get it all set up properly, learn exactly what to post in terms of content using content frameworks that you can literally just plug and play your own story your own spin your own personality onto them right and just follow those frameworks mix up those different frameworks into a little content stew so you got a bunch of different versions of those things going on so your your traffic equity is balanced and you're not just selling and you're not just giving value but you're doing both and then once people respond to some of those direct or indirect offers you've got a game plan now for how to actually get into the dms with those people and convert a lot more of them than you would if you were just hoping that they clicked on your link and bought or just sending them a quick link in a, in a message you've got a little sequence you can take them through to increase those conversions if you do this that is the difference between good and great. This traffic alchemy, this last piece, that is really where a lot of the money is made. So getting good at it is worth your time. Your, your confidence will go up the more you do it. The first time will always feel weird, but as long as you are not weird, don't be weird through this process. Keep it fun, keep it light. Don't be afraid to show your personality. Use emojis, GIFs, that type of thing to, to kind of ease this process, make this sequence more fun for you to do. Walk them through it. Get them to a point where they're just asking you for the help. They're like, yeah, like you got me pegged. Like that. I'm, this one I'm struggling with. This is, you know, this sounds like exactly my situation right now. I need help. What do you got, right? Awesome. Here, let me hook you up with the link. Go through that. I'll wait for you. I'll give you five, 10 minutes to go through it. I'll be right here. Just message me when you're done and you're in. You know, really simple, but now you know you've got those conversions happening. And remember, taking your Facebook profile and turning it into like three, four, five, 10 sales a day is big. Like that's a, that's a huge win with organic traffic. So that's really nice. That's kind of where you want to, you know, focus your goal on getting to. And you can do that. You can walk anybody through this sequence you can turn your facebook profile into a money machine the same way that we have the same way as a lot of our members and students have as well if you want to learn how all this stuff works at a higher level um, in coaching or have somebody walk you through it or evaluate what you're doing things like that see how our highest um, members are, are walking people through this process and doing it too you can always ask about that we've got other things outside of this that work really really well too so there's many ways to do this and we do it differently on different platforms and so um, if you ever want to 
turn up the, the volume knob on this too and dive into paid traffic where you're not taking all your time to have to do all this posting and stuff, we've got options for that as well. So there's a lot of solutions outside of just this, but I think this is a really great way to kind of start and just use something you've probably been using for a decade anyways, that's just been sitting there, probably costing you time, costing you money, all that, and then turn that into something that's you know legit, uh, gonna actually put some money in your bank account and uh, be great with. So that is it, that's the seven figure Facebook. Take care.